All right, folks, we've been talking a lot in this year about focusing on quality and certainly being aware of zombies. Joining me now is Real Talk Capital CEO Rob Luna. You know, Rob, we just had a chart up there that says up to 40% of companies are zombie companies. Now, there are different ways of talk, you know, measuring it. Uh, you know, some people use cash flow, some people use market cap or whatever. You know, it's either way, there's a whole lot of companies that just existed because there's been so much free money out there. And I wanted to talk to you about how you go about identifying these zombie companies because the last couple of times you were on, you, you made a serious emphasis on quality. How do people avoid the zombies? Yeah, you know, I, I use a five-step process that kind of keeps me honest, Charles, and it, you know, it really all starts with the CEO and the talent and the people that these companies are able to not only attract but also maintain. And we also we just saw that right with with Disney when Bob Iger stepped away, Chappic came in. We saw what happened to that company. So one thing I'm always looking at, Charles, is the talent for companies. Can they attract, maintain key talent? Second thing what I'm looking at is their balance sheet. If you start seeing companies all of a sudden taking on debt, especially debt that is getting downgraded, they're taking on higher and higher cost of debt, that's going to be something if their balance sheet gets out of line, I'm going to be worried about. Then what I'm going to worry about is here, you've probably heard this, Charles, the underperforming expectations that they set themselves in these quarterly conference calls. They keep coming up with new reasons why they can't meet them. It's COVID, it's gas prices, it's the election, whatever it is, constantly underperforming. Then what I'm also looking at, do big key clients start stepping away from the company? Right. You got to worry about that. And finally, the last act of desperation, are they starting to shift away from their core value proposition, their core strategy? If Olive Garden starts selling Mexican food, I probably want to get away from it. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, great points. And I love the one when they make up their own metrics, right? They're like uh, revenue per, <laughs> per people in, in our city who are left-handed but skipped high school. Like, you know, they find any kind of ways. We're growing the company. All right, so let's talk about exactly. what you're doing because you've had a hot hand here recently. What are some of the names you're buying? Yeah, a couple of new ones. One new one in general is Easy Corp. EZPW is the symbol. It's a big pawn shop. Uh, the thing about pawn shops, but not too big, kind of a small cap stock is right now, as we know, with the banks, credit is tightening. We're starting to see that jobs number not look quite as good. The real economy is feeling what the market told us about a year and a half ago. So I think this is a company, great valuations you want to take a look at. Another name that I've been in and out of that I'm just about to get back into is RH, Restoration Hardware. I think the selling's been overdone. Good long-term company. I like it a lot um, right here at these valuations. And the last one is Axos Financial. This is a financial that got beaten up with the rest, but very different. It's actually a great custodian in the space. And if you look at investment advisors, they usually use Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade. Well, what happened? Schwab brought out TD Ameritrade, not a lot of competition. I think Axos is going to be a big winner for that trade. All right, man. You gave us three really intriguing names here. Rob, happy, uh, happy Good Friday and have a great Easter, and we'll talk to you again real soon. You Thank too. you, my friend.